What I wish I knew before becoming a math instructor at community college. Before that, I was a tutor for many, many years, tutoring math. Obviously, I've created some sort of math YouTube channel here, but I really do. I love my job as a math instructor, specifically at community college, those sort of first two years um, as what a traditional university student would study in math, you know, anything from pre-algebra up through calculus. What a great area, at least, at least I think. That's kind of my bread and butter. So these are the top things, about seven things or so, things I wish I knew before I became an instructor at a community college and maybe some things that you'd like to know if that's something you're interested in pursuing. So number one, and then probably the biggest thing I wish I knew, and I don't think this just pertains to community colleges, I think it's colleges across the board, is all of the behind the scenes stuff that you have to do at the job. I think as a student from the outside looking, <laughs> looking in, you know, there are, well, I think a lot of beliefs that students have. I think students think, well, you know, the, the teacher comes in, you know, for, you know, 50 minutes, two or three times a week and gives their lecture and maybe does a little bit of grading, but, but that's it. That's all you have to do as a, as a college instructor. And that is, that is just so wrong. I mean, you have to, you have to realize that there's a lot more that goes into the position than you would initially, uh, initially think about, you know, there are plenty of meetings like department meetings, college-wide meetings, faculty meetings. Um, there are mandatory trainings. There's lots of trainings that you have to be kept up to date with and special certifications, you know, things that um, the college has to mandate for all the employees. You have to really be able to coordinate your schedule between your classes and these meetings and meeting with students, your office hours, and uh, setting up your courses, especially now, uh, pretty much all colleges have an online interface, you know, a, a web portal where students can access their courses. And so you, you have to set that up. So sometimes that's set up for you. Yeah, and you know, this is all really relative. So your experience, of course, might be totally different than mine, but depending on which classes you're teaching and just Ah, there's so much, and there's more than I can list. There's lit lots and lots of behind the thing, behind the scenes things, and I, that's true of any any job, any profession, right? There's always going to be things behind the scene that you just don't know, you don't realize are there until you get into it, until you get into the nitty gritty. Number two, what I really wish I knew, and this can be a very double-edged thing, and this is this is sort of in my situation, is the freedom that goes along with the job, specifically of how you present your lecture. Depending on where you teach or where you, uh, what classes you instruct, you might have a lot of freedom in your presentation. You know, you might have total freedom. Maybe you have certain guidelines or maybe it's very, very rigid. For me, as long as I cover the material, you know, in, in a reasonable manner, in a reasonable pace, I can more or less do it how I wish, whether that's uh, PowerPoint or video or maybe like a hybrid course, you know, it's kind of up to you. You can make your own lectures, you can use lectures that were given to you. And there's not a whole lot of direction, at least in my case. In my case, I was hired, they were like, here's your classes and uh, here's some, some resources, go teach. <laughs> and that is... Uh, that's very good. Again, that was just my case, but it's good and it's bad. It's good that it gives you the freedom if that's something you thrive on. You know, so for me, I'm pretty independent. I kind of like to do my own thing. But if you're someone who needs a lot of structure and a lot of guidance and you want to know the exact way that you're supposed to be doing things, that might be in something, uh, something you want to investigate a little bit further because you sort of, as a teacher, especially at college, you necessarily have a little bit more independence, a little bit more freedom than um, another type of profession. The third thing um, that you know you don't expect, uh, but maybe you do if you if you live in a university setting. You know you've been in university for a while or colleges. There's lots of professional development. I know one thing with my job, which which happened to be a full-time teaching position and is, is there's a required professional faculty development program, new faculty development that spans, well, it's supposed to span two years. Essentially, uh, you're supposed to take classes and attend events and 
development seminars, these sort of things. And at the end, you know, you do a presentation in front of your, your mentor. So they assign you a mentor and you can have weekly meetings with your mentor. And at the end of this, you know, you give a, a e-portfolio, like a website presentation of what you learned and how you grew during this new faculty development process. And uh, that was really surprising to me that there was all of this, this extra training just because um, you were new. Now, most jobs, of course, will have you do required training or maybe professional development. But a two-year thing, and, and I had to take three classes. I'm nearly done with my classes that I have to take for this, but it just surprised me. And this is probably just a just a case with where I'm working, but maybe not. Depending on depending on your school, they might want you to get more training, higher certification, higher degree. You really don't know. It it varies. It just surprised me. It's something I wish I knew going in. Number four. This is a. Um, really will depend again on, on your situation, but there's a strong push to get instructors engaged in campus life. So whether that means being like an advisor for a club or attending events or hosting events, whatever that really means, usually colleges and universities, they want their instructors, they want their teachers to be involved on campus life or, or in the students' lives, you know, you're supposed to be there in more than just an instructor capacity, ideally. It's not always required, but it's something I sort of, I wasn't something I was thinking about when I was applying to these teaching jobs. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. It's just an extra one of those behind the scene things that you're, you're not really aware of until you get into it. The fifth thing kind of goes along with some of my other points is that the job is simply busier than it looks. I alluded, the, alluded to this before that when you're a student, you see your professor two or three times a week, and maybe you've even seen their schedule where they're only teaching, you know, three or four or five classes. It doesn't look like they have a very heavy schedule, but it's much, much busier than it appears. And, and this, I think, was maybe something that attracted me to the position is I thought I was going to have all this free time on my hands. Well, little did I know that your schedule is basically a full-time job, at least for me. I mean, I'm required to be there, you know, at full-time capacity, and my schedule is nearly filled to the brim. I mean, most of the time I'm either in class, I have office hours that, that fill up my time, uh, I'm doing, you know, different departmental meetings or meeting with my my mentors and just just things are always coming up there's grading to do you know when i'm not having specifically scheduled time for things i am i'm grading and i'm also taking classes for my professional development so i really i don't necessarily have a lot of free time at work. I mean, sometimes, sure, everyone does, but it's just much busier. It's much much busier job than I thought. So maybe once I get done with the uh, faculty development program, things will lighten up a bit, but we'll see. Number six, preparing for your courses, it's kind of what you make it. So let me tell you what that means. I kind of thought that when I first got hired, I would have to develop all these classes from scratch that I'm teaching, basically make lecture slides or whatever it is, starting with nothing, like here's a textbook. And you can definitely do that. Like I said, you have a little bit of freedom, at least in my case, I have a little bit of freedom. But I wasn't expecting, I really wish I knew that a lot of it's done for you or can be done for you. There are prepared lecture materials out there for many, many classes. and. In my case, uh, much of it was just done for me. I was sort of handed a class or I was gifted a class and the material, the prep was more or less done for me. So you can kind of do as much or as little as you want. You can just build your own course if that's something you prefer. But if you don't have a lot of time and you really just need to go and teach something, hey, that's available too. So it's probably a lot different from maybe a high school perspective or maybe a university perspective even, in my case, I pretty much got to choose how much I wanted to prep my classes. And the last thing here that I really wish I knew um, before becoming an, inst an instructor is that compensation for your job varies a lot. So you might know uh, like the argument of adjunct faculty versus full-time faculty, faculty. There is a wide gap in how they are compensated and even if you are full-time, you might only be a temporary full-time, meaning that 
the college only brings you on for a few years or a few years based on a certain contract length and it's really just kind of rolling the dice depending on where you apply depending on how long they keep you for and in what capacity based on your years of experience based on your education level it's all over the place so it's important to do your research when you're applying it's important to make sure you know exactly what you're going for maybe you have a little bit of an expectation there and don't dive in before you realize exactly which kind of position you're getting. But those are just the things, top seven things or so, that were on my mind today. The things that I wish I knew before becoming a math instructor at college. I hope you enjoyed the video. hope you got something out of it. If you're thinking about becoming an instructor, thank you very much for watching the video till the very end. Have a great day.